Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the weekend edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I am your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Uh, I especially want to welcome all of those joining us from Traders Army. Dot com. Uh, we've got actually some really cool news that we're going to be kicking off here soon about some of the uh, some of the fun, cool stuff maybe we're going to do with TradersArmy.com and the Daily Market Commentary here in the future. So uh, stay in touch for some cool news. Uh, but uh, we're going to do what we do each and every week here in the Daily Market Commentary. We're going to take a look at some market opportunities that we do uh, every day. And the key is, if you're new to the channel, we use the same levels and the same markets every day. Um, and we don't change the lines on the charts because we want to be uh, able to look at our positions, look at our trades and see how those trades, positions and opportunities change over time. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. Now, the difference on the weekend edition is we do tend to look at a slightly bigger time period uh, just to kind of recap what happened for the week that was. Um, so in the S and P, we have the uh, the S and P 500, and you know those of you that watch the, the 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 DMC every day, we had talked about the potential for a breakout long, and there was no way I was shorting this this all time high, right? It just didn't make any sense. Like I always say, don't spit into the wind, don't pull on Superman's cape, don't short the all time high, and of course we broke out above and we closed just off of the, the all-time high. Now, this area down below, still a very valid buying opportunity if price comes back into there. Although on Friday, we put in another new buying opportunity somewhere down in here. Now, the futures markets will open up shortly. I do like doing these uh, videos on Sundays uh, because on Sundays, I can see where the futures markets have opened up. Although we've not opened up yet today, um, this is my area on the hourly time period. Now, what do I like about this? Well, specifically, what I like about it is old resistance becomes new support. And we have this area here, which acted as resistance, uh, which can now act as a support area. It becomes a, almost a psychological number, especially right there at 2850. So keep an eye if you if, if that 2854 by 2846 is a bit wide for you, you could even cut it down to around that 2850 as your number um, and really use that whole round number support as a uh, as an opportunity. When we look at it from a big, big, big picture perspective, I continue, you know, the same thing that we talk about every week uh, in uh, in these videos is there's there's just no reason to short. We've you know, we've gotten one, two, three, four weeks in a row. Um, if I move this off the ES and move it actually to the SPX where I don't have the lines because I don't really feel like uh, getting rid of all my lines. Um, you can see that we have closed on the high every Friday for the last four weeks. So four weeks in a row closing on the high uh, is a pretty bullish signal, um, but you know not one that we see continue very often, right? Even going back in time, you don't see weeks and weeks and weeks on end where we actually close on the high. Um, you see two, three weeks at a time once in a while, we had four weeks in a row right through here, and then after that, we kind of flattened out. But you don't get very often four big weeks like this closing at the high. So um, as I've said for weeks, don't be uh, un don't be afraid of a pullback. I actually believe a, a pullback would be healthy. I'd love to see a pullback into this 2700 range for another chance for, for, for traders to kind of get back in to the market if we do get a little pullback into there. Don't see that in, uh, occurring this week. But keep it in, you know, on your radar screen as a, as a potential fair price value area looking forward. Um, Nasdaq. So looking at the Nasdaq once again. Nasdaq also very similar, uh, you know, kind of parabolic move straight up. I am not going to put the same area, the same opportunity in the Nasdaq as I did in the S and P because I don't have as clean of an old resistance becoming new support kind of area. Um, and and the old resistance becomes new support. What I'm really looking at is the amount of orders that are piled up in that area, right? I'm not using traditional support and resistance as a lot of people read it in books. I'm really looking at what 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 unfilled order inventory re remains at that particular area. Um, and, and if there's enough uh, unfilled buy orders remaining at a particular area, it will act naturally as a as a support line uh, and as as a chance for somebody to get long on a pullback. So 
The NASDAQ slightly underperforming the S&P in general, so I'm really going to leave it be. I'd much rather take a look at the S&P opportunities than the NASDAQ opportunities uh, in this moment. Uh, crude oil. So crude oil, we had a 15-minute chart set up. For those of you that watched the video on Thursday morning, uh, as I started doing these videos in the morning times throughout the week, which actually have gotten a lot of good feedback about doing them in the morning on a daily basis. Um, and the 15 minute area we had set up early in the day, price came into here, a little bit of a, you know, jumping around a little bit, not a great uh, opportunity. And of course, that's what we saw. We saw it hit come down and then it come through and failed the area. So remembering that a level that's in purple is always a small time frame level. We've got a slight, slightly lower probability of success on that thing. Um, I am going to though, uh, take a look at this area right here, uh, as a, as a slightly better potential since we did get that move up. Um, oh, sorry, that's, that's the NQ. I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my CL. Sorry about that. Um, look at this on the hourly time period, there we go, uh, where we had that move up off of a breakout in this area right through here as a uh, as a potential buying opportunity if indeed we do get a little bit of a pullback. And I think that we will get a bit of a pullback in here. We've seen a slowing in mo of momentum. Uh, I'm just not sure if our pullback will be deep enough to get us into that area. Remember, we originally had looked at getting long way back here. And so some of you that were able to hold that position out the whole week, you were rewarded with, uh, you know, a little over $3.68 uh, uh, per share of movement, uh, $3.68 per contract of movement, uh, you know, off of, uh, off of this, uh, off of this place. So still running, but you still want a chance to get back in if you haven't jumped in yet. Gold. Now gold, I will tell you, I'm feeling a little bit more bearish on gold. Um, I had been very bullish on gold, but I do have four consecutive lower swing highs. I have this really strong swing low. Now, remember, though, that this is, uh, you, you know, in a large part due to the due to the transfer of contracts here. Um, but I definitely am seeing that strong upward momentum that we had is definitely slowing. And remember, you know, the way I measure kind of momentum is I want to look at, look at how long this thrust up was from here to here. The next one was from here to here. The next one from here to here. So my thrust ups are getting a bit longer. My pullbacks are getting a bit deeper. So we could getting be getting a little bit of weakness here in gold, which, you know, which is okay because I still think that, that there's going to be money going into gold as we see the weakness in the dollar. But a bit of a pullback in here would just kind of give you an opportunity to get long. Um, and if you're not doing it on GC, maybe you would want to do it on something like the GLD. Um, you know, I know a lot of you out there, especially those of you at TradersArmy.com, are options traders. Uh, and there are, you know, a plethora of ways to play GLD using the options market and the options arena. For those of you that don't uh, trade options, you don't know what you're missing. And um, once again, that's part of what I'll talk about. Uh, I don't know, probably in the next coming couple of weeks, I'll lay out kind of my plan because I've gotten a lot of emails from you about what do I do about options and if I want to learn or, or get a little bit more option stuff, you know, where can I go? So I'll give you some some ideas and some thoughts on that coming up. Um, let's go to our bonds. So looking at the bond market, the ZN. So on the ZN here, we have the weakness of the downward move. It's losing that downward momentum, but it's not gone yet. Uh, and, and so I'm not touching anything here, nothing major. I'm very tempted to look at this area right here. This area here is a very tempting potential short, uh, right off of this, uh, you know, old support area through here. <clears throat> Definitely some fair price value uh, built up in here, but it's not as high probability as something like this up here. So I'm going to hold off on it for just a moment. Um, when I go even to the weekly time period on this, we did get a breakdown out of this area on a weekly chart. So if you look at this weekly chart, we got a breakdown and there's room for it to run all the way down to here. So I think we're going to see continued weakness in the bonds. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're looking at your, your personal investments as well. On the Aussie, so our Aussie trade still continuing to run. Hopefully some of you were able to catch on that Aussie move as it's continuing its uh, march higher. 
The Euro still hasn't met our entry point, so we'll kind of leave that one be as it currently is. Uh, and then the Canadian dollar, we had the move up, price came back down, just nearly got us filled, and then came back up to right where we got in. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of this area for now, so hopefully we're able to catch some profit off of that little bit of a move. Um, we didn't get all the way down to this region in here for another re-entry to the long side. Um, but that one is, uh, the, 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 the trade up here is no longer going to be valid. Looking at Nat Gas, Copper, Great British Pound. Uh, Nat Gas, I think that we're putting in a little bit of a topping pattern, excuse me, of, of a potential breakout long pattern uh, with this area being tested a number of times. And, and if we break above this range, we may get a chance for this to, to run a bit higher. Um, I think that's a very, very valid, uh, very doable thing. Uh, and if we do come down a bit, this area right here presents a potential uh, buying opportunity, depending on its arrival back into here. So you've got to make sure that the arrival offers you enough profit margin to take the risk on this. But this one also looks like a potential right through here. Uh, Great British Pound. We still have our area in place for a long on the return. Same thing with our Japanese Yen and our Copper position. Uh, we remember had taken the, for those of you that were able to join in and take the short from here, it's, it's continuing, it's moved back down. We then changed the line to a dashed line. Um, although I think if we get enough of a, of a pop-up, you may get another opportunity in through here. Um, but keep an eye on these areas down here as potential reversals uh, to stop it from continuing to fall. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to turn this thing off for the weekend edition. I'll be back on probably uh, early tomorrow morning on, on our daily market commentary. Uh, if you guys have any questions between now and then, certainly, certainly feel free to reach out. Uh, those of you from tradersarmy.com, uh, send an email support at tradersarmy.com and we're here to answer all your questions and help as best we can. Um, and uh, and uh, until next time, talk to you all real soon. Have an absolutely amazing week. See ya.